I'm Mary Claire with the library. I just want to welcome all of you. We're going to have our elephant chat and our presenter is Ms. Sam with the Indianapolis Zoo. And I hope, I'm sure a lot of you kids out there have been to the Indianapolis Zoo. I know I, I'm a kid and I've been to the Indianapolis Zoo and it's lots of fun. So take it away, Ms. Sam. And thanks everybody for being here. Yeah, thank you everybody who's joined us. Um, thank you guys so much for being here today. So like Mary said, my name is Ms. Sam and I'm a program educator here at the zoo. <clears throat> so what that means is all the different um, programs you can come to the zoo and do like our animal art adventures or our dolphin in water or video chats like the one we're doing right now. Those are all the things that I help run here. So I don't get to work with one particular animal like one of our trainers would, but I do get to see and get to know a lot of the animals at the zoo because I'm around a lot of the different animals, which is probably my, probably my favorite part of the job. So today I'll just be talking to you guys about all of our elephants here at the zoo, the different type of species that we have compared to the other ones in the wild. We're gonna be going over all the different really cool adaptations that elephants have. And then you guys will get to see some artifacts that I've brought out, which are super cool. And we'll probably watch a few videos. That way you guys can actually see the elephants that we have here at the zoo. So first, before I kind of dive in, I wanted to know if anyone who's watching wanted to let me know something that they love about elephants or something that they want to share with me that they know about elephants. Does anyone want to uh, share anything really quick? around. Don't, don't be shy if you share something about elephants if you want to. Well, Tessa says they are really big and <laughs> Tessa, you are exactly right. They are the biggest land animals on the whole planet, which is super cool. And because they're so big, there is obviously things about them that are way different from every other animal because of their massive weight and their height. So I'm actually gonna pull up um, a PowerPoint to begin, and we're gonna take a quick look at the different types of elephants. Oh, also, Jessica in the comments just said they have trunks. And that's probably one of the most prominent things that people think of when they picture an elephant in their head, is those awesome trunks. And we'll get into that later. So first, let me turn on this. Hang on one second, my computer is having a little bit of a freak out on my end. But here we go, hopefully you guys can see that and I'm gonna get my little laser pointer here so you guys can see me moving around. So this species of elephant right here is the African elephant. And you can see that this one is a little bit different than this one right here. And this is the Asian elephant. And here at the Indianapolis Zoo, we have African elephants. And in most zoos, you don't normally see a mixing of the species just because we wanna keep them with their own species. So. Here at our zoo, we have just African elephants, and we have five, and I'll go over them in a second. But first, I want you guys to take a look at these two species, because it is possible to tell them apart just by looking at them. So if anyone wants to chat with me, you totally can. Um, if not, I will just go on with it. But does anyone who's watching want to say anything they notice that's different between the two species? Like, how would you guys tell them apart? The African elephant has tr long trunks and the Asian elephant doesn't. Ooh, thank you so much for saying that. So that's actually kind of just a trick of the picture. It's actually not the trunk size or the length that is different, but there is something about the trunks that you could use. And I'm gonna go back to me for a second so I can kind of show you. So. First of all, the trunk is a really cool adaptation because it's actually a mix or like a conjoinment, I guess you could say, of the nose and the upper lip. So it's as if our upper lip and our nose were to join together like this and then grow really long. That's basically what their trunk is. So while they cannot drink through their trunk, because that would be like us drinking through our nose, they can breathe through it. But the thing that's different between the African elephants, which are the ones we have here, 
And the Asian elephants with their trunks is actually in the fingers. Did you guys know that trunks had fingers at the end of them? <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's not like our fingers, but kind of similar. So I'll show you a picture in a minute or two where it'll zoom in so you can tell what I'm talking about. But African elephants, they have two fingers on the end. So they are really good at picking individual things up with those little finger-like appendages at the end of their trunk. Asian elephants, on the other hand, they only have one finger. So they can't pinch things and pick things up quite as well as African elephants. So African elephants with the two fingers, they can pick things up with their trunks. Asian elephants that only have the one finger, they kind of have to scoop things up and then pick it up because they only have one of those fingers. So keep that in mind. Going back to this, I'll tell you another thing. You cannot rely on their color because I have a lot of people come to these and they say, oh, well, the African elephant is really gray and the Asian elephant is like a brownish color. But again, that's just a trick of the picture because really the color of their skin actually relies on the dirt where they live. Because if you guys didn't know, elephants love tossing dirt all over themselves. They're constantly throwing dirt on their backs all day long to keep the sun off of them, to keep bugs off of them, and just to cool off. And all of that dirt will coat their entire bodies. So sometimes they might look brown, sometimes they might look even a little bit red. And I've even seen a white elephant because they were covered in salt and salt is very white. So you can't rely on the color when telling them apart. So, so far, the only thing we know how to tell them apart with is their fingers on their trunks. Does anyone see any other way we could tell apart these two species? <laughs> the, which one is African? It? African elephant is bigger than the Asian elephant. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for saying that because you're exactly right. The African elephant, this is not a trick of the picture, is bigger. They are not only taller, but they're also heavier than Asian elephants. Asian elephants will only get to about 10 feet tall. African elephants can get over 12 feet tall. So if you look up at your ceiling right now, everyone look up really quick. <laughs> if you look up at your ceiling, your head, if you were an elephant, might touch the ceiling. And if you can imagine having to bend over all the way to the ground to eat grass, that would be kind of hard on your back, having to bend over 12 feet every single time you wanted to take a bite of grass. So that's where their trunk comes in handy. It can reach the ground for them. So it's an awesome adaptation having that trunk since both species can get really tall. But like Jessica said, or Jessica's, um, friend, whoever is in the chat with them, I can't see them. But like they said, the African elephants are gonna be slightly bigger than the Asian elephants. So now we have two hints. You can use the fingers on the end of their trunks. You can use their size as a little bit of a hint, but there's also an easier way. Did anyone see anything else? One has, in the picture, the L, the African elephant has a long tail. Ooh, so the tail is another one of those things that is just gonna be the same for both. So in this picture, he, you can't see his tail, but it's definitely there. And actually they're pretty similar. So if you wanted to tell them apart, other than this- Ears, the ears. Oh my goodness, you're right. It is the ears. The ears are probably one of the best ways to tell them apart because in the African elephants, the ones that are a little bit bigger and have two fingers on the end, their ears are also bigger. So now you can kind of remember, okay, well, the African elephant is bigger than the Asian elephant and their ears are bigger. And when I go back to the picture, if you look closely, their ears are actually kind of shaped like the continent of Africa. So that's like a super cool way to remember it. And then Asian elephants, not only are their ears smaller, but they're also folded on top. So if I go back to the picture, 
These guys' ears, they do not fold over, they fold backwards. With the ancient elephants, they fold in the front, like you can see right here. And if you want another easy trick, the African elephant's ears go past their chin, but in the Asian elephants, they do not because they're smaller. Now, there is one more way you can tell them apart, but it only works for the female elephants. And the trick is in their tusks. So in this picture, these are both female elephants. And the reason you can tell the species apart is because this female elephant has super long tusks. Does this one have tusks, guys? You guys see tusks in this one? No, I see people shaking their head, no. And this female elephant does not have tusks. And that's because in Asian elephants, the females don't get tusks, only the males do. But in African elephant species, they both get tusks. So all of our elephants here at the zoo have tusks, which is really cool. So. We figured out a couple of the ways. You can use their trunk because African elephants, they have two fingers and Asian elephants only have one of those finger-like appendages on the end. The Asian elephants are a little bit smaller and their ears are a little bit smaller and they fold over on the top. And then the African elephants are bigger, not only taller, but also heavier and their ears are bigger. So now I'm gonna kind of give you guys a little bit of a test. So let's see if you guys can do it. I'm gonna test you guys and I want you guys to join in if you can talk. So first things first, who wants to take a guess? You guys think this is an African elephant or an Asian elephant? African. Oh, I heard African and you'd be correct. This is an African elephant's trunk because you can see the two fingers on the end. You can see this top one right here comes to a point and the bottom comes to a point. And that makes it really easy to pick things up with their trunk. Little fact, not only can they lift trees with their whole trunk, but weirdly enough, they can pick up something as small as a blade of grass. That is crazy. Not only can they lift up a tree, but they can lift up a blade of grass that's so tiny and they are so big. So that's just a really cool thing about these guys. Good job with that first one. Let's see if you guys can get this one. All right, African or Asian? Asian. You are correct. So you can see they're holding that first finger on top, but if you look at the bottom, it's flat and there is no second finger. So you can see tell that this is an Asian elephant because of that. And that's why these guys have to kind of wrap their trunk around their food and then lift it up as opposed to pinching it off the ground. All right, let's see if we can use the ears to tell them apart. Who knows this one? African. African. Oh, I heard a couple different people say African and you are right. I am so impressed so far. So you can't really see the trunk that well. So it'd be best to look at the ears. And you can see if you're using my trick, their ears go past their chin. And if you look at the shape of Africa, this is kind of what it's shaped like. So this is definitely an African elephant. Now let's see if we can get the next one. Ooh, Asian or African, who thinks they know? Asian. Asian. Ooh, yes, I heard two people say Asian. And you are exactly right, ma'ams. And that's because their ears are tiny and they fold over on top. Ooh, bonus question. Who knows if this is a male or a female Asian elephant? Male. Female. Ooh. Female. Oh, whoever said male was correct. Nice job. Give yourself a pat on the back. This is a male because remember, only the male elephants in the Asian species get those tusks. The girls don't get them when it's an Asian elephant. So that means this one had to be a male because since it's Asian, the female wouldn't have tusks. Good job. All right, let's see if there's one more. 
Oh, we've got the babies. Who thinks they can tell? This one's pretty hard. Asian. Oh my goodness, I am so impressed with you guys. This is an Asian elephant baby. And the really, the only thing you can use to tell it apart is that the ears are kind of small and they're starting to fold on top. Really impressed with you guys, good job. All right, I think this next one is the last one. Another baby. Who thinks they know? African. African. Oh yeah, I heard Jessica and Julie's group say African. You are exactly right. And once again, you can use those big floppy ears to tell them apart. Good job, guys. All right, so now I'm gonna go, we've done the species. So now you guys are experts at telling apart African elephants from Asian elephants. Now I wanna go into some of the really cool adaptations the elephants have. And raise your hand if you ever heard the word adaptation before. If you haven't, it's okay. All right, a couple people have, a couple people have not. Well, an adaptation is basically something on an animal's body or something that an animal does that helps it to survive in its environment. And elephants live in really harsh environments sometimes. They live out in the really dry savannas, they can live in the deserts of Africa, and sometimes they can go into rainforests. So it just depends, but mostly they're gonna be out in those open plains and those grasslands, chomping on a bunch of grass. So, because they're always out in the sun, they always have to go very far to find water. They have to have a lot of really awesome adaptations to help them survive in that environment. So I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna let you guys take a look at a couple of the really cool things that they have and I can show you some of the artifacts I have. So first things first, let's see what comes up. Oh my goodness, it's the eyelashes. So really quick, everyone feel your eyelashes really quick. They're very soft, they're pretty short normally, and they help to keep some dust out of our eyes. They help keep our eyebrows from falling into our eyes, and it just kind of keeps our eyes safe. And that's exactly what they do for the elephants. Except what do you guys notice is different about our eyelashes versus their eyelashes? Oh, they're long. Oh, long. yeah. There are two things say they are longer, and that is exactly right. You can see this one eyelash goes all the way out to here. And the reason they have such long, beautiful eyelashes is for the exact same reason we have. It's because they need to keep dust out of their eyes and even more so, they need to keep the sun out of their eyes. So basically, those really long eyelashes act as eyeball umbrellas to keep the sun out of their eyes when they're in the sun all day long. And it kind of acts as a bonus to help keep bugs out and other debris from getting in their eyes. So that is a really cool thing about elephants is those really long, beautiful eyelashes. Another super cool thing that we've already talked about is their trunks. And remember, I said a trunk is basically an adaptation of a nose and an upper lip. So they grew together and they grew really long. Remember, that way the elephant doesn't have to bend over really far every time they have to get a snack. So that trunk is a really awesome adaptation that can help pick things up off the ground, they can suck up over two gallons of water into their trunk at one time, and then they shoot it back into their mouth. They can pick things up with it, like trees or like grass, like I said. And another really cool thing, you know how we've got muscles in our bodies? Everyone give me your best muscle pose. Well, their trunk is basically all muscle. And even more so, we've got some muscles in our arms, we've got some muscles over here. They have over 40,000 muscles just in their trunks. That's crazy. And it might even be upwards of 100,000 muscles. And I know that's a big number to think about, but that is just crazy. And that's what makes it so strong and such an awesome adaptation for them. Let's keep looking. 
All right, next is another big staple of the elephant, and that is the tusks. So I have a lot to say about tusks. They are super, super cool. So first things first, you guys think that the elephants chew their food with their tusks? What do you think? Give me a thumbs up if you think so, or a thumbs down if you don't. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with a no. <laughs> they do not chew their food with their tusks because they're not even in their mouth, right? So what tusks are, they are teeth, but they're called modified teeth because they're not meant to chew. They're modified to do other things. So one of the artifacts I brought out of our vault to show you guys is actually a real elephant tusk. So this is real ivory. And if you guys didn't know, that is what these teeth are made of. It's something called ivory. And it's a really strong, really dense tooth material. And you guys can see it's hollow down the center. So normally there's a bunch of stuff in there like pulp cavity and other stuff, but really the nerves in their teeth don't hit until right about here. So if we ever needed to, or if an elephant ever broke its tusk, say it broke it right here, it wouldn't even hurt the elephant, which is a good thing because um, some of our elephants, which I'll introduce to you in a second, we actually have a family here that has really brittle tusks. And what that means is if they rub it on something too hard, it can actually crack or break a little bit. And they don't feel that, but it could lead to a tooth infection. And going back to this picture one more time, these teeth go all the way up here into their head and all the way up back into their brain. That's how far back these tusks can go. And so if you can imagine getting a little crack right here could lead to an infection all the way up into their brain. So here at the zoo, we have to be really careful with our elephant's tusks because they could crack them and they could get an infection. So we actually do this really cool thing called capping, which is basically just like what people do for their teeth when they get cavities, is they put a metal cap on their teeth. And that metal cap helps to protect the tusks from getting cracked in the first place. So if you guys ever come to the Indianapolis Zoo and you see some of our elephants with these big metal caps on the end of their tusks right here, you know that's there because they could be rubbing their tusks too much or they're prone to cracking and we obviously do not want them to get infected. So another really important thing I want to mention about tusks is that these are a big problem for elephants. Not because they're not supposed to be on their face, but because people want this material. Have you guys ever heard of people selling ivory before? Have you guys ever heard of poaching before? Right, I see some people shaking their head. Poaching is when people go into an elephant's habitat and they take their tusks. And that is really bad because these tusks are good for so many things. They can use them for digging for water. They can use these tusks to lift up entire trees that might be in their way. They can use these to dig for roots. Did you guys know that elephants eat roots? Well, that's what they use it for. They can dig for those roots and then eat them. And then lastly, these are also great for protection. Now, luckily elephants don't have that many predators because they're so big. But if they ever do run into issues, they can use these big, strong teeth to help them. So when people take these for their own purpose, they do something like this. This is actually a tusk that was taken out of the ivory market and given to us so that we could educate people. So do you guys see how they etched something into this tusk? That's not a good thing. And so somebody had to kill an elephant for this tusk and they were trying to sell it illegally. Luckily, somebody found it and they were able to take it off the market. That way no one was selling it anymore. And now I can use it to educate you guys to make sure that you guys never buy ivory. But that's not a good thing. This is just a decoration instead of the elephant's full life. So, oh, and if you were wondering, the reason I have this 
is not because it was being sold for ivory, luckily, but instead, this is actually from one of our elephants. So, like I said, our one of our elephants has really brittle tusks. It just runs in their family. So, if they ever crack one side and they have to get it cut off, luckily they don't feel it. But can you imagine having just one tusk? Your head would be really heavy on this side. So in order to balance out the weight, we had to cut off the other side. And it just made it nice and balanced for the elephant. And now we have this to show you guys. So this is pretty cool. And if I was to, if I was able to hand this through the camera and let you guys hold it, it is really heavy. And that's because this has to be strong in order for them to use it for all the different things that they use their tusks for. Okay, I've been talking about tusks for a really long time. Does anybody have questions before I move on really quick? Any questions in the group? Okay, I just wanted to make sure before I move on. So that's the tusks. Let's see what's next. So this is just showing how they can use their trunks to suck up water and then they hold it in their trunk and then they'll pour it right back into their mouth to get a nice big drink of water. This is kind of showing the same thing except you can actually see them shooting the water out on themselves and they do that for the same exact reason a person would. You can obviously see this guy's probably pretty hot. So he's taking a dip in the water and they're putting water all over themselves to cool off. Ooh, anyone know what these are? Anyone wanna take a guess? What does this look like? Teeth. Oh, yes, 100%. Those are the elephant's teeth. So I should have shown you the artifact first because it's pretty surprising but this is what they look like if you were to pull a tooth. And this isn't real, so don't worry. No teeth were pulled to get this. This is a replica, so it's just made of plastic. But this is what it would look like if you had to get a tooth pulled from an elephant. So you can see here this, or actually real quick, can you guys see this kind of orange line right here? Give me a thumbs up if you can kind of see that orange line going across the bottom. Okay. So everything above that line, all this crazy stuff right here, that's the root of the tooth. So you know how our teeth are rooted in our gums to make them nice and strong? Well, that's exactly what this is for. And this is a big root. So that's to make sure their teeth are really strong. And that's to make sure they're nice and strong because they need to grind down all that really tough plant material. I don't know if any of you guys have ever chewed on a stick before. I hope not, because that would be kind of weird. But if you ever have, it's really hard to chew on the wood. So these guys, in order to chew and break down that wood, they need to have these flat teeth with all these ridges in them. So do you guys see all those ridges? Those are so the elephant can grind down those roots and those branches and the bark and all of those leaves that they're eating. So these grooves, as they get filed down over time, they, get, they become flat and then the tooth falls out. So really quick, show me on your fingers, how many sets of teeth does a person get? Anyone know? How many sets of teeth do we get? We have our baby teeth and then once those fall out, yes, I see you, we get two. So people only get two sets of teeth. We have our baby teeth, those fall out, and then we have our adult teeth for the rest of our lives. Elephants, on the other hand, their teeth are constantly getting filed down by all that hard plant material. So as soon as this is flat and these ridges are gone, do you think they'll be able to chew their food? Nope. So in order to fix that problem, these guys get six sets of teeth. So this is kind of like um, probably their fourth or fifth set of teeth. It's pretty big. It can get even bigger than this though. And when they're a baby, it looks like this. This is a baby elephant too. So same thing, this is all of the root. And then this part right here is the part that you would see if they open their mouth. And you can see this is just some baby ridges. And as that one gets filed down, this one will fall out 
and they'll just get a new set of teeth. So that is a really cool thing about elephants. Oh, and lastly, you can see two teeth right here. How many teeth do you guys think they have in total? Show me with your fingers. You think they have two? Do you think they have 50? What are you guys thinking? All right, I see you saying 10. Any other guesses? I'm seeing another 10. Oh, I'm seeing five. All right, I'll tell you. We have like, let's see, I think we have about 32 teeth in our mouth. Elephants only have four. They have these two teeth on the top, one, two, and then under here, back here that you can't see, they have another three, four. So these guys have a total of four teeth in their mouth. And even though they don't have as many teeth as us, they're gigantic, so it's okay. And it works perfectly for them. And then, like I said, they have the tusks, which are modified teeth. They're not true teeth like these ones are, but they are technically teeth. So let's see what else is there. Oh, and this is a baby tusk coming in. So they're not born right away with tusks. So they don't come out of their mom with full grown tusks. They have to grow over the span of their lifetime. So this is what a baby elephant's tusk would look like as they're growing in. And then this not only gives you a good look at the back of their ears where you can see all of those really awesome veins in their ears, which helps to cool them off in the heat, but you can also look at their tail. <laughs> Excuse me. So looking at this tail, what do you guys think the purpose of an elephant's tail is? Who wants to give it a shot? What do you guys think they use their tail for? Who has a guess? Any guesses? Do you guys know what horses use their tails for? Oh, I see somebody saying to fling their dung, and that's a good guess, but not quite. What did you say? Say it again. To keep their flies, to keep the flies away. You are exactly right. If you didn't hear her, she said it's to keep the bugs away, and that is definitely true. So these tails basically act as a giant fly swatter. So when they're out in the desert or in the savannas, they don't have arms like we do to swat a fly off of them, so they use their tail instead. And if you didn't know, even though an elephant's skin is so thick, sometimes up to four inches thick, they can still feel one tiny little fly land on them. So I want, I have another artifact to show you guys, and that is this. Does anyone want to know what, or want to guess what these are? Any guesses as to what this could be? Go ahead if you have a guess. I see some people. In Julie's group, what do you guys think? <laughs> oh, I see. Elephant you. hair. Yes, and I also saw you in the chat saying the uh -huh. tail, and you are right. This, these are little tiny tail hairs, well, not tiny, but these are tail hairs that we got from our elephants. See? So really, everyone feel your hair. Feel your hair really quick. It's really thin, really wispy. It helps us keep the sun off of our heads, but it's not the same as this. Our hair, our hair is really thin and it moves around really easy. These, these are nice and hard. And that's because they use it as a fly swatter. So it's thick and it's tough and it's really great for getting the bugs off of them when they're in that savanna heat and having the bugs all over them. All right, so really quick, since we're talking about adaptations, I didn't have a picture for this one, but I have something better. I wanna show you guys their feet. So if you don't know, elephants kind of walk on their tiptoes. Did you guys know that? You can't really tell by looking at them, but the bones in their feet are actually kind of on their tiptoes. So they need to have a lot of fat pads on the bottom of their feet to catch all of their weight. So these guys can be almost, or over 8,000 pounds. So imagine if your feet had to hold up 8,000 pounds. 
that would be really tough. So to make up for all that weight, not only are their feet ginormous, but they also have that giant fat pad to help cushion them when they're walking. So um, this artifact that I'm about to show you is a foot mold or a cast. Has anyone ever had a cast before? Maybe not. Has anyone, has anyone ever had a friend that had a cast and seen one before? Okay, I thought so. so I've had a cast. Right, so you know that they put something around your arm or around your foot and then they can take it off and then they basically have a mold of your foot. Well, we did that with one of our elephants. Her name was Sophie and she was our matriarch. Um, unfortunately, she did pass away last year, which was very sad for our group, but we got a mold of her foot before and it's so we could show you guys just the crazy size of their feet. Are you guys ready to see it? My All name right. is Sophie too. Oh, that's so cool. Well, in honor of Sophie, here is how big an elephant's footprint is. I know, it's huge. Look at this, look at it compared to my hand. This is just a giant foot. And so you can see here too, we got all of her toes in it as well. So how many toes do you guys think an elephant has? Zero, 10, how many do you think? Three. Oh, somebody four. said four. These guys four. Are four. Three. Well, Three. let me show you. Let's count, let's count together. So we'll start over here. Oh, let me, see. just kidding. So we got one, two, three, oh, four, oh, five. They have the same number of toes that we do. So it's really hard to see because that fifth toe was really small and the nail was not that big, but they do have five. And to show you a little bit better, I have one last artifact to show you guys. So remember how I said they kind of walk on their tiptoes? This is what I meant. This is a replica of an elephant's foot. So you can see all the different bones in their feet. And I'll stand up to try and show you guys. We got one, two, three, four, five. So same number of fingers and toes that we have on each foot, except that, look, they're kind of on tiptoe. And that's because in this big space back here where my hand is, that's where that big fat pad is gonna go to catch all their weight when they step on the ground. And has anyone ever walked on tiptoe before? Right, we, I'm sure we all have before and it helps us walk really quietly, right? Well, it probably won't surprise you to know that when elephants walk, even though they're so big, they don't make any noise when they walk. They have silent footsteps because of that giant fat pad on the bottom of their foot. So that's just another really cool thing about elephants. So before I introduce you to the um, pack really quick or to our elephants, I wanna show you guys a video. <gasps> and we're almost at 545. Oh no, I've talked too long. Okay, let me show you this video really quick. It's a super cool video about Tommy. She is one of our elephants and you can see her kind of doing her day to day and you can get an up close look at her um, eating some food. So give me one second here. Can you guys hear that all right? All right, perfect. Meet Tombi. She's a 39 year old African elephant who lives at the Indianapolis Zoo. Like all of the animals here at the zoo, Tombi is an ambassador for her species, teaching us about elephants and their amazing abilities. We're getting an incredible glimpse into Tombi's world through ion cameras as she enjoys some of her favorite treats, tree trimmings, and watermelons. One of the elephant's most unique physical features is the trunk, which contains more than 100,000 different muscles. Tombi can move her powerful trunk in a variety of ways to manipulate different objects, like breaking branches across her tusks to make them easier to eat. Like all elephants, 
Tombi's trunk is super strong. Using her trunk, Tombi can easily lift heavy objects like tree trunks and tractor tires. So picking up a watermelon is no problem. Using the two finger-like extensions at the tip of her trunk, Tombi can also pinch and grip smaller items. But even with the remarkable strength, Tombi's wide Okay, I'm gonna pause it right there because we're running a little bit out of time. So that was just a cool up close look at our elephant Tombi. And really quick, since we're almost out of time, I'm gonna do a quick little introduction of each of our elephants. That way, if you guys come, you guys can know who we're talking about. So really quick, I'll give you a short introduction. This is Kubwa. She's our oldest and she's a mom to Kadar. He is our only male elephant and he's 15 years old. And like I said, he's our only male and he's the one that has these caps on his teeth. So my laser pointer went away, there we go. You can see the caps on his tusks in this picture. He doesn't always have them on, but sometimes he does. This is Tombi, we call her Auntie Tombi most of the time because she's just about as old as Kubwa, but she's never had calves of her own. So she loves hanging out with Kadar and Zahara, the two youngest elephants, and therefore we call her Auntie Tombi. This is Ivory, she's about 39 years old. Um, so she's not the oldest elephant in the group, but she is a mom to three calves. And one of her daughters is still here, and that's Zahara. Zahara is our youngest elephant, she's a girl, and she's 14 years old. And she does like hanging out with Tombi and her mom, Ivory, and occasionally Kadar. So with the time we have remaining, I wanna hear your guys' questions. And really quick, I do see a question from Facebook. It says, which elephants are the most endangered and how do we help with that? And that is the most perfect question I could have started with because I normally end my chats with a conservation message. So to answer that, um, African elephants are vulnerable and Asian elephants are endangered. And both of the numbers are declining. So African elephants could very much um, be endangered in the future. And so if you guys wanted to help with that, one way you can help is actually by coming to the zoo. And no, this is not an advertisement. I'm not joking. Coming to the zoo, your money that you spend to get into the zoo actually goes back to conservation efforts in the wild. Specifically, we work with Dr. Charles Foley. He is an elephant um, expert, basically, who works in Africa, and he's working to uh, protect the habitats there. So one of the major things going against elephants besides poaching is habitat loss, or what's called fragmentation. So if you have a big square of land and you cut it in half, suddenly, which that thing that could cut it in half, that might be a road, it might be a city or a town, Either way, you're fragmenting the land. And so when humans come in and do that, suddenly the elephants can't go in between those two corridors and it makes it harder for them to find food and water. So basically finding or supporting places that help elephants is one of the best ways to help. Or for those of you who are watching that um, purchase items, so if any of the parents are in the group, you can look for something called the FSC logo. It's basically a little check mark with a tree and it stands for Forest Stewardship Council. And that basically means that no new trees in these guys' habitats is being cut down for paper products. Instead, it's being taken for more sustainable areas. So for the people who are left with me, who has a question that they would like to know? It could be about elephants or about conservation or about the zoo in general. I'll do my best to answer whatever questions you have. What do elephants eat? Oh, good question. So in the wild, they're gonna eat a lots of things, like I said, like roots and bark and trees and branches. And they eat all that here too, but they get some bonus items here. They also get things here called herbivore biscuits. So that's basically just like this little biscuit packed with nutrients. And so they get that some of the time. They get tons and tons of alfalfa hay. Um, and the hay has to be individually sorted all the time, making sure there's no plastic in there. Um, so their diets are 
carefully chosen every single day. So they get hay, they get grasses, they get leaves and branches, they get those biscuits, they get beets and apples and watermelons and pumpkins, tons of stuff. And they all have a favorite. So Tombi, Auntie Tombi, her favorite food is beets, which is kind of weird, but she just loves eating beets. And I think Kadar's favorite is mint, which is weird. They're, they're weird, I love them. So yes, that is some of the things that they'll eat here. What's your question from Julie's group? What's the normal lifespan of an elephant? Ooh, good question. So like I said, our oldest elephant is about 45 or 46 years old, but their lifespan could be anywhere up into the 50s and the 60s. But saying an elephant can live to be 60 is like saying a person can live to be 100. So it's not super common, but it can happen. And if I'm thinking correctly, I believe the oldest elephant ever on record was 62 years old, I think. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> so yeah, typically around uh, late 40s, 50s, sometimes into their 60s. What other questions did you guys have? You can use the chat or you can just turn your thing on and ask me. So I have a question. Can an elephant be overweight? Ooh, that is a good question. And yes, they can. Um, so I, I have never heard of any of our elephants being overweight. Um, and I actually don't, I, I don't think I have ever heard that, but any animal can get overweight. Um, and I know that our orangutans um, who were rescued from things like the circus where their diets were not carefully chosen, they became overweight. And so if we ever have a rescued animal come to us that's overweight, we have a really special diet plan for them that gets them back on track to a healthy weight. Good question though. That's a really interesting question. We have some in the chat that says, do elephants have really good memory power? That's a great question because yes, they certainly do, and there's actually a reason why. Well, not only is their brain huge, because they are huge, but specifically the matriarchs, the leaders of the group, that's the female elephant that leads the herd. The reason they have to have such good memory is because the entire herd is relying on her to remember where the water and the food is. So she has to remember the routes that they have taken in the past to find the food in the water. So that is why their memory is so good and why it has to be good is because they rely on that memory to find water and food. Really good question. Any other questions? I see some people typing, so I'll give them a second. While you guys are doing that, I am going to play in one last video, if you guys want to stick around for it. It's a, um, <laughs> you want to ask? Why do elephants have to stay together? <gasps> Good question. So elephants actually like to be around each other. They're not solitary animals. Like our sloths, sloths like to be alone. So they'll hang out by themselves. But elephants love being social. Just like people, we love being around other people, just like elephants like being around other elephants. Now there is an exception because um, elephants, when they're boys, when they're old enough to, or when I should say, when they're mature enough, they will go off from the herd and they'll find their own little group of male elephants to hang out with. But all of the babies and the young elephants and all of the moms and grandmas, they'll all stay together because one, they like being social and two, it's good for protection because if there's more of them, it's gonna be harder for an animal to take them down. Really good question. And I had another one in the um, chat say, do they eat leaves? They most certainly do. And actually another bonus fact for you guys, if you come to the Indianapolis Zoo and you're walking on grounds, be sure not to step in the landscaping because we actually grow a lot of our um, animals' food right in the landscaping. So if you walk in the landscaping, you might be stepping on the leaves that are gonna go to the elephants later. So just keep that in mind, but they do certainly eat leaves. 
So if you guys have any questions, you can think about them because I'm going to play one more video um, if you guys want to stick around and watch it. It's pretty cool. It's about um, conservation and what the zoo is actually doing right now to help elephants in the wild. So take a look at this. Um, and if you have any more questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section. years and our project involves elephant research, monitoring and also a lot of conservation. Well, the major success of our project has been to protect large areas of important wildlife corridors and dispersal areas and ecosystems. One new project that we started will be of particular interest to people from Indianapolis because it actually came about as a result of the Super Bowl. The zoo rented out its car park and the zoo very kindly gave those funds to our project. And what we did was we used it to look into an area that was of considerable interest to us in the south of the country. There are two big national parks. One of them is called Ruaha National Park and the other one is called Katavi. We believed that wildlife moved between these parks and we assumed that elephants were moving, but we didn't really have any proof. So what we did was we got a Tanzanian PhD student to work on this issue. And what he found was that indeed, this is one entire ecosystem. The elephants do migrate between these two parks. We are now working with the zoo, aiming to preserve it as a corridor forever, which would be one of the largest elephant corridors anywhere in the world. So by attending and supporting the Indianapolis Zoo, you are also helping elephant conservation in Africa. Alrighty, guys. Any last questions before I leave today? I know Mary and Stephanie, I'm so sorry I went over time. <laughs> you are fine, Sam. That was a really fun presentation. I think we all enjoyed it. Sure learned a lot about elephants. <laughs> oh, oh great. I thought do we have I see a hand up. Oh yeah, from Julie's group. Go ahead. Do elephants eat French flies? <laughs> oh boy. That is a very good question, but I can assure you they do not actually eat french fries. <laughs> but not french fries. <laughs> That's a funny question. I like that one. Yeah, that was fun. Well, <laughs> thanks so much, Sam, and thanks everybody for listening in. We really appreciate your time, and I think we all want to go to the zoo now and talk to those elephants. Yay! Have a good evening, everybody. Do Bye. Do elephants eat meat? Uh-oh, another question. Good question. They do not. They are strictly herb herbivores, which means they only eat plants. Good question. Okay. Tessa, thank you for coming. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks again. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.